Lisa, I am so excited. This is the uh, first podcast we're ever recording, and uh, and you're my first guest, and I can't think of a better person to go first, so thank you for coming. You're welcome. I love being here. I love the coop. Oh, man. I, I want to talk to you about, uh, first of all, let's create some kind of backdrop so people know, you know why they should listen to you and what you've gone through. <laughs> you've been in the mor- mortgage industry for a really long time. Over 25 years. Over 25 years. Right. All right. I have to do the math on mine. I was 98, so so at this point, it's it'll be 24 years this year. Okay, I think I'm exactly the same as you. Yeah, About okay. 1998. Yeah, September 98 mm-hmm. is when I got in. I think I was January of 98. Okay. Yeah. And it was, uh, I remember it being tough in the beginning. Uh, I know the, the rates would go from like 9, to, they went down to 8, they went down to 7. Yes. Which got super exciting. Do you remember those like first days of like excitement and like this is going to be a super good career? I I do and I don't. Um, I had already had a full career. I ran a construction company uh, for a manufactured home dealership Mm -hmm. for 20 some years and they decided they needed a mortgage broker. And so I got thrown into it. I kind of fell into the mortgage business. And so I'm almost 40 years old and I get given a new career. So oh, wow. I kind of was panicking. Um, everything felt like it was going to the big black hole. But once I did realize how exciting it was, you it's so easy to just get addicted to mm-hmm. all of it. All of it. It's a it's a wonderful job. It's so interesting. Let's let's dig into that cuz you had a career already. I did. And one of the things I've been talking about lately is the struggle for people who've had so much success. Mm-hmm. to humble themselves and go, I guess I'm going to have to work for it again. Not a lot of people can do that. It's, it, that's true, but it's attitude. And it's mm-hmm. also determination and gumption that mm-hmm. just there's, there's not an option to fail. Mm-hmm. So I had to succeed to make our company succeed. So you, you saw this as this is the only option. Correct. And so you, how quickly were you able to come around to that? Or were you just immediately like, I'm, put me in coach, I got this. Yeah. Put me in, I got it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And I did join a friend's company, so I had mm-hmm. people that I knew, and um, it uh, ended up being one of the greatest moves of my life. I love this so much. Are you like that? Do you like scary things that could be awesome? I, You know, I would love to say that my lizard brain says no, mm-hmm. screaming the whole way. I don't <laughs> want to change, but... I think I I just told the friend yesterday, I need to be challenged. It's what uh-huh. I thrive on. I have to have something to look forward to, something that's new, something that excites me. Um, and uh, so I did. I embraced the change. I cried. Mm-hmm. I laughed. I started bonding with my clients. Um, and then I started my love of mortgage. Wow. So, so you saw this as an adventure that was to be yeah. had. Yeah. And I love that you Every said you cried because a lot of people are like, I just dove right in. It was awesome. But even awesome things come with some tears or some right. some fear and all those things. It doesn't mean it's not a great adventure. It means right. part of a great adventure is dealing with the, the fear or the, or the concern. Right. So I had a really unique situation. So um, our, I don't know if I shouldn't say this, but our, <laughs> our loan officer that we had at mm-hmm. our company um, was uh, in cahoots with a the appraiser, oh. and so this is back in the day when yeah, the appraiser when would like that. tape the pictures into the the appraisal uh, yeah. um, format, yep. and it turned out that the addresses and the pictures were not the same. So if you looked at the address oh. and you went to the house, it was not that house. Right. And so they both actually got to go to jail. Oh really? Mm-hmm. This is way back in the beginning, where it was really oh just gosh. wasn't done, and so. Um, can we just stop for a second? Because pictures on an appraisal, I forgot. Yeah, they taped them. They used them. to tape them <laughs> and onto the... And they would bring the... you multiple copies because they... We're talking oh faxing and... and our, uh, yeah, we're talking... Um, you would have to fax our transbox, but I, re- I yes. remember that. And I, and I remember the first digital one. I'm like, what is this? This is mm-hmm. magic. When I first saw a digital picture mm-hmm. on an appraisal, that's funny. So this is what's really interesting is because our company had already had a problem, mm-hmm. my first six months in the mortgage business working at Pro Mortgage, I was supervised by the state of Oregon. <gasps> Because you were part of a company that they had did struggled. Not, right. They did okay. not believe we were going to do things honestly, which wow. was the purpose of me coming in. So you weren't just taking on a new role. You were taking on a role under direct supervision of like, is she going to do something wrong? Right. Which a lot of people would have crumbled underneath. Like I, a lot of people don't wa- like being watched, you know, performing where mm-hmm. like, 
if you were to watch them, they're like, I can't do this. There's test anxiety, right. which is like people struggle with test anxiety mm -hmm. when somebody is staring at them. Like, are they going to cheat? They're like, I can't do this. But you right. had yeah. a massive amount of scrutiny and yet. Yeah. And, and it gets even better because um, I knew nothing, right? Mm -hmm. I had to learn what a good faith estimate was. Mm -hmm. I had to learn how to do the fees, how to read a rate sheet. Mm -hmm. um, the, the entire job. Yeah. Um, and then two months later, I went into a manufactured home show where I took a hundred applications in three days. Oh my gosh. So I, I didn't even know what to do with the <laughs> I've applications. Got all these applications. And so I kept saying, sure, I can do your loan. Sure. I can do your loan. And then I got back to the office and was massively overwhelmed oh, because, yeah. you know, they had a 580 credit score or a 560 right. credit score or if you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I did end up that's how I started my business. Within two months, uh -huh. I had a hundred deals I had to start with. And from there, it just went crazy. So time-wise, from the time that you were like, I guess I'm going to do this and this is scary, but it's an adventure to the time that you already started getting momentum, mm -hmm. only a few months. Yeah, very few. Wow. And then I had to learn fast. Okay. And you know, there were a lot of things I said I could do and then I couldn't, or, yeah. um, you know, I had to figure out how to do them. Right. Uh, and, uh, so we had a unique ability because we had a credit line that we did our construction loans mm -hmm. on. And so I could actually do credit repair through the construction loan because the partners allowed it. Oh, okay. So um, I would pay off debt. Mm -hmm. And then when I was ready to do the takeout loan, they would have a higher score. Their mm -hmm. debt would be fixed. Um, there, there's some, and there were, I mean, it's, it, was a, it was a lot of work, mm -hmm. but it was very satisfying. Wow. And I know that when people hear you say credit repair, they're going to freak out because I always freak out I when know, I hear that. I know credit repair, you, but you I'm just able like, to help them. You were helping them. them actually as humans. You were helping them with their financial side. Correct. And yeah. telling them like, hey, you know, yeah. we should probably get some of this taken care of and, and putting them in a good place to be good homeowners. Exactly. Yeah. That was it. Just trying yeah. to get them. Like they own their property free and clear. And, um, you know, they just, they just had stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, and just educating them and walking them through a home ownership process and mm -hmm. what it would do if we paid off this car or these couple credit cards and get them ready to go. And and it was a lot of counseling and teaching mm -hmm. as I went through, which is why you bond. I bond with them. Mm -hmm. So I didn't. I did a construction loan and a and a takeout loan. Mm -hmm. So um, they were with me for more than a year. Do you do puzzles? I do. Do you like puzzles? I do. It's so interesting because... It's that last piece yeah. that you get... I mean, we fight in my family over who's going to put the last piece in. Uh -huh. Sometimes they'll put it in their pocket and oh save it. Oh my gosh, that's gangster. Um, it, it is <laughs> because, yeah, we're all very competitive. But yeah. that last piece, and it is, it's a puzzle, Ken. That's yeah. what every loan application is. It's the story. It's the person. It's um, making it work. Mm -hmm. Knowing it's going to be okay, not mm -hmm. putting somebody into a loan or a home that they can't afford mm -hmm. or is going to hurt them later. I don't want my name on that ever. Mm -hmm. um, I want it to be a happy ending story. Mm -hmm. The time of their life, the most amazing thing that happened. Mm -hmm. Not, oh my gosh, my loan officer put me into this house mm -hmm. and now I'm going to lose my property. It's been right. in my family for years or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's uh, It's got to be a win-win. Yeah. It does. Um, my daughter, Ari, and I do a lot mm -hmm. of puzzles together, and we put the last one in together, so we both hold one side oh. of it and put it in. Um, but it is interesting. I wonder if people who are good at the mortgage industry are also good at puzzles because it really is let's have a success, mm -hmm. a, a successful outcome, and it's just going to be these pieces we need. Right. And in the beginning, you don't really have the, you know, the, the picture of what the puzzle is supposed to look like at the end. No. Nope. And so your first few months was like, did I put the puzzle together right? And you don't really know until it funds. And you're like, oh, cool. And so you start right. to form the image where you let, you know what a successful loan is supposed to look like. Right. So then you did that. You found success when you and I met, which had to be in 2000. It was right after we started the company. So right. it would have been 2003 or four. Correct. It's probably 2004. Um, you were my first contract that was a, you guys asked me to do something I don't do. Um, which is to, to go down every single month and, and host a class. And so I started doing that. Um, I became best friends with, with uh, your manager at the time, Dave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and during that time, I got to see, you know, you would walk in always with a smile on your face. Um, I knew you, were, you would go through stuff, but you could always turn that into a smile. Right. The market starts to go completely south, as we all experienced. Do you remember the moment that you're like, uh-oh, this is not going to be good? Um, I... Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting because you could just feel it. You, could, um, mm -hmm. the momentum picks up, the doom and gloom picks up, the business slows down. 
Um, your phone, and my phone typically rings all day mm-hmm. long. It slows down um, to manageable, which is frightening for me. Um, and To manageable. So it slows down <laughs> to where I can manage it and I get right, scared. Right, That's awesome. It, but it's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, at that point, I remember having conversations with very seasoned, well-producing loan officers. Mm-hmm. And again, it's, an, it's, a, it's a shift in your attitude. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember saying to one of my fellow loan officers, I said, you know, we just have to be grateful for what we've got mm-hmm. and what we've been through in the business we've had. Mm-hmm. And we'll get through this. And I said, so I'm just grateful for what I what I have had, mm-hmm. and I will do it again. And he said to me, I would rather have never had <gasps> than lost. Really? Mm-hmm. And I said, ah, then you missed it. Somewhere you missed living through that. Um, and wow. I was I was actually really really surprised because what I learned is I had to reinvent myself. Right. I had to say yes to things that I would normally be. I'm just going to be honest, too lazy to do. Uh I had to take some hard loans. Uh I did have to send some people to do credit repair. Mm -hmm. I did have to have... um Get, get my brain activated and work a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe a co-borrower. Maybe, you know, and, and we weren't, I, I'm super blessed because of my product because, you know, I do man homes. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't have stated income. I didn't have option oh, arms. Right. They weren't available right. for me. And, you know, I, I thank God every day that I was blessed to not get into that. Mm-hmm. Um, because when you tried to pull people out of some of those, because mm-hmm. we went into a value situation, we mm-hmm. went into a lot of different things. And I had friends who had a, were on a 10-year arm. It was 10 years. I hadn't paid anything into the interest. Oh and they gosh. were like $200,000 negative. And oh it was a gosh. piece of property they'd owned for like 15 years. Yeah. And they should have had some equity, but they didn't. Uh-huh. I don't, I'm glad that we made some changes. Yeah. I, I really am. Yeah. Um, Can we pause and go back to gratitude? Because yes. I don't want to skip past that. Um, I'm, I'm studying stoicism right now and I'm loving it. And a lot of that is, uh, what you just said, where it's like, how awesome is it? I got to experience this mm-hmm. ride, mm-hmm. even when things are going badly to be able to tap back into, mm-hmm. I just want to feel for a second what it felt like to have this amazing mm-hmm. industry with mm-hmm. everything was easy and it was cool. You had to accept that and go, I'm so thankful for that. Mm-hmm. And now I'm going to go earn it again. Right. So it's a line that a lot of people don't find where people are like you. I mean, even in your I'm conversation, you found out somebody was like, I wish I never had it. I was blown away. Yeah. I'm going to do it again, Ken. Yeah. I'm going to do it again. The first rate I ever quoted on my first loan was 7.75. Uh huh. I grew up in the era where my first home loan was 14.99 uh-huh. on an arm that went up to 18.99 and there was no cap. And so oh I gosh. ended up selling my house renting for two years and starting over. Yeah. I have had a jumbo at 10. I have had a jumbo at eight and a half. I just kept refining down to, you know, six, then to four and a half. Um, I, my current loan is at two, two, five. You know, I, yeah. I, you will, I probably will never see that again in my lifetime. I hope not. It's not healthy. Right. But it's a matter of just getting people to understand right now that what we what they've seen is not the normal. Right. If they we've got to get them to ta- give them time to get used to the, you know, 6 7% mm-hmm. interest rates and know this is normal. Mm-hmm. And um, the thing I love about right now that's different than 2009 and 10 is that these are qualified borrowers. Mm-hmm. We aren't slipping them into a house and mm-hmm. ha- causing them harm right. or or hoping they can make the payment. Mm-hmm. The the um, Dodd-Frank bill has put into effect the fact that that people are qualified Mm -hmm. now. We have to verify the ability to repay. It's Mm -hmm. so easy. You know, you just, they say, well, I've got this and I've got that. And I said, if I can't verify it and I can't see it, then I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I I understand. I was self-employed. I'm a commission-based loan originator. Mm -hmm. But if we can't see it, we can't use it. Mm -hmm. Well, my wife babysits. Great. Put it on a tax return and come back. (laughs) You know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Right. And um, it it makes it so much easier to be a good loan officer because um, everybody should be doing it the same way. Right. Um, But these are qualified buyers, so it's a little bit nicer. And and I'm I'm old school, so I don't really believe everybody gets to have a house. Right. It's a a privilege. You work for it. It's a responsibility. um, And it's it's something you work toward Mm -hmm. and grow to. Okay. So 
for those watching this on video, which is a portion of them watching this in the coop, they got to see her smile when you said, I'm going to do it again. I am going to do it again. For those listening on audio, her eyes light up and she smiles so big and says, I'm going to do it again. I think every loan officer should write down like where they can see it from their desk, that statement, I'm going to do it again. Because it's that, it's almost like you see this as like a challenge of like, all right, bring it. And, yeah. and, and partly why I wanted to start this podcast is because I want to tap into, you've done it before. Twice. You've overcome mm -hmm. major challenges before. Mm -hmm. You know what you used to overcome mm -hmm. that. And it's this attitude of, I'm going to do it again. Right. Because you've already been through it. And now you have better tools than you did last time, which is what I was, I mean, I, I kind of guessed that's what a lot of successful people have done, mm -hmm. but you're proving it. Like it is cool. All right. We're handed this. Let's mm -hmm. do it again. You know, what's interesting. 2009 um, was probably the first year that all of the, bad stuff hit. Mm -hmm. I actually made more money that year that I had ever made in my life. Wow. 2010 was the worst year I'd ever had. And yeah. from there, I just thought, nope, I'm going to have to reinvent. I'm going to have to figure this out mm -hmm. if I want to succeed. And I do. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, yeah. So I'll do it again. That. I will do it again. Yeah. When I know you will, because I can see the <laughs> attitude and I also have seen your career over time. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of people who've had success and, and don't currently have that attitude. Um, and that's that the fastest way to humility is to realize partly it wasn't me that did this market. The market happens. Mm -hmm. That's a fact, right? And Correct. so how do I then work through that, get back to, okay, because of the market, I now have to work. And I think part of what people do is they take that blame on themselves. Mm -hmm. Like, why didn't I prepare for this? Why wasn't I? And that blame can end up getting them stuck in their office, feeling like they're not right. worthy to go out and build it again. You seem to know what's your problem and responsibility and what is the market's problem and responsibility. And you seem to have those pretty separated. Yeah. It's, it's education. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's nothing you can do about it. So mm -hmm. just explaining to people, you know, if people, uh, there's offices closing and loan officers calling saying, Hey, what are you doing? Or how are you? Know, how are you? Mm -hmm. um, what do I do? And um, I just say, it's not you. This isn't a, this mm -hmm. isn't a solitary, your company problem. This is a nationwide problem, mm -hmm. and it's not even a problem. It's just we're having, they're having to make adjustments based like any business would mm -hmm. in a downturn mm -hmm. or until it comes back. I mean, mm -hmm. it is, it's not personal. There's a lot of great underwriters, processors, mm -hmm. even originators that are not going to be in this business after a while. Mm -hmm. um, and this is not going to sound nice, but I, I'm excited about it mm -hmm. because it's kind of a fresh start a reset mm -hmm. a cleansing mm -hmm. yeah because if it were easy everybody would be doing it right if it were easy everybody would have a 25 30 year career although you know a lot of us that have that mm -hmm. career yeah um but it's the people who come in and out that make our business our, our job harder mm -hmm. because they come in with misinformation without edu enough education right. without enough experience and do the yeah 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 i can do that and in reality that person should have been talked to about Maybe not right now. Can we mm -hmm. revisit in six months? Can I call you in six months? I think mm -hmm. you should, you know, maybe get a little bit, you need more money for a down payment. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see you get your debt ratio a little bit better. It's a, it's a relationship. It's mm -hmm. not a loan. It's not paper. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it, there's a fiduciary responsibility, and I have a personal responsibility mm -hmm. because I live in a pretty small city. Mm -hmm. I want to see these people at the grocery store mm -hmm. and have them still like me. Um, and and have them feel good about what I did for them. So it's education. It's just talking mm -hmm. them through. It's talking a loan officer through. It's talking my fellow loan officers through um, who are scared to death. And it's like deep breaths, people. Just do your job. <laughs> uh -huh. it, it's going to be It's gonna be okay. Right. It, it, it just will. Right. You know. Um, and part of I'm going to do it again is I'm going to do it right again mm -hmm. so you know what right looks like. And what you're saying about... A borrower might not be a borrower today. Right. And I think people are so busy trying to force people into being borrowers. What you're saying mm -hmm. is that's your borrower for next year. So let's nurture the relationship now, mm -hmm. which is you saying, cause I'm going to be here next year. Uh, you're right. And I'm going to be here the year after that. And right. when I am, I want to be able to look at these people in the grocery store, like you said. Right. And so don't think in short term is what you're saying. Think no. over longevity, like just keep doing right. you and Loan know that the market will come back to you. Loan officer for life. Wow. You know, I, I want repeat customers. I want mm -hmm. them to be able to find me. I want them to know I did them 
great the first and second and third time and mm -hmm. we're going to refi and pay off our bills. Right now, that's a super great niche mm -hmm. is, you know, I'm doing two right now. They're doing massive debt consolidation mm -hmm. just to kind of hang on to, you know, just the economy's a little bit tough right now. Mm -hmm. And um, people got themselves in trouble in COVID. They've got their house rich and cash mm -hmm. poor. Um, and so paying off debt and getting some of that, oh, off their show, you know, just mm -hmm. given that relief. Um, it's, and it's not hard to sell. We're in sales, but mm -hmm. it's really about that personal relationship that's going to give them something that gives them peace. Mm -hmm. Let me wrap this conversation with, uh, I love everything that you've said and it's not you saying it, it's you being it. Like this is who you are. And, and I, so that people know when we started this conversation, I'm like, we're just going to talk about, you know, the past. And you were like, all right, let's go because you don't have to manufacture anything. This was completely spontaneous. Right. Um, but it's because it's who you are. And I remember I sent my brother over to you I to did. do his loan. Yes. And the funny thing is, you know, I always talk about what do people say about you? Like if they're going to refer you a deal, mm -hmm. what do they say to the person they're referring? Like this right. person's a great loan officer because what? And that'll tell you what your best gift is. Mm -hmm. And so when my brother was like, I want to, you know, do my loan. What I thought of is they are very caring, loving, nurturing mm -hmm. people. They, are. they need a loan officer who sees them, mm -hmm. who matches values with them and mm -hmm. goes and can talk on the same level as where they are mm -hmm. in this. Like, it's all about just like life. Like this is life. We're all doing life together and somebody that can actually match that, that dynamic. Right. Um, because you're in it long term, because you really, really care about people, it then makes people want to send you business. And my, I remember my brother calling me. He's like, she's awesome. Like it was just an easy, um, which is how people get business. And it's not about going to try and find that next deal, which is why I hate a lot of, of sales training in the industry. It's like, go get that next deal. Yeah. It's like, or or just be awesome and, and build these relationships and then be there when, you know, and they know you're there when it's time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The best advice I can give is answer the phone, <laughs> answer your phone, answer your emails, be prompt. The, the biggest thing I hear is uh, I called somebody two days ago and they haven't called me back. Right. And I, I don't understand that. I, I like to get my business done. And at the end of the day, my emails are done and my phone calls are done and I go home and I'm done. And mm -hmm. anybody can wait from seven o'clock PM till, eight o'clock the mm -hmm. next morning. I mean, yeah. um, and if you can't, then we probably aren't a good fit. Right. You know, I'll try to, I'll try to please everybody, but, mm -hmm. um, just answer your phone, just do mm -hmm. your job. Be yeah, present. I talked to a friend who said, you know, a year ago when the rates were three, <clears throat> the borrower wanted it more than we did. Yeah. And so they were reaching out to us and forcing the conversations. Right. We now want it more than they do. Right. And so we can't act the same way if we text a borrower and they don't get back to us, it's because we're more excited about the loan than they are, right. which is where sales comes in. Right. Don't back off and be like, I guess they don't want it. We no. don't have that luxury anymore. If no. you have something that is going to benefit them mm -hmm. and they're not getting back to you, it's just because they're busy and they and you want it more than they do. So I was on a phone call with a, um, it's a coffee for closers. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to some of their sales approaches mm -hmm. and I loved what I heard. It was, hey, you know, I called 10 of my clients to past clients today just to check in mm -hmm. and like, hey, we don't need anything. We're good. And he's like, great. And um, then they kept talking that, well, you know what? Maybe we should do this mm -hmm. loan. Maybe we should do a refi and pay this and this off. Or we were looking at a second home in Arizona or whatever. And all of a sudden they did need a loan. Mm -hmm. They didn't think about the loan officer. So if you stay present in your current client's life, mm -hmm. I think the op there's more opportunities than if you just do the one and done. Right. Mm -hmm. When it's that reticular activator too, where, you know, if you right. see something that you were just studying or you're just exactly. thinking about, then exactly. you're like, wait, I have a loan for you. <laughs> um, and I used to joke, I could take three applications in one day as a loan officer and the same exact people would talk to me a day later and I wouldn't take their applications. Like I didn't see them mm -hmm. for what the, the loan that they could do the second day, but I was in a mood where I'm like, everybody gets a loan today. Yeah. And like, if that's your mood that you wake up in, you'll find you're more successful on those days. Correct. And if you wake up and like all these borrowers don't qualify, go golf. Like you're better on the golf course today than you are <laughs> answering calls and turning right. people down or making them feel like they don't qualify. So it's, true. it's being in that mindset when you make the phone call. So when you call your 10 borrower or your 10 current clients, mm -hmm. 
and you are just asking open-ended questions, you're listening for the chance to do something for them right. instead of trying to prove that nobody wants to get a loan right now. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's great. It's, it's just a mindset. Mm -hmm. People do still need loans, and mm -hmm. they do still need to buy a house. And yeah. I always say it's better to own part of something than, than nothing. Mm -hmm. And um, the cost of weight is just too much. Yeah. I mean, the equity position the affordability it, get in a house it's mm -hmm. your it's where you dwell yeah you know refi that's what refis are for right exactly so i'm gonna do it again and that's what a refi is for those are my <laughs> those two, are two those are my two things right now that's yeah. what a refi is for you nice. know nice. but it's true yep yeah all right we're gonna cut this this was awesome uh thank you so much for being here i think people will get a lot of value out of this we're gonna go film you talking about manufacturers on a completely different subject <laughs> It's going to be amazing for, uh, for the Knowledge Cube clients. So thank awesome. you so much for being here. Thank you.